Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the podcast and things that we do. It used to be called Gotcha Year, but now we're calling it Locomotion. Yeah, okay, so we did settle on Locomotion. We got uh, my boy's world and Tim out here. He has some call me Matthew, out. don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, whatever, okay. Let's get into topics and things. Who wants to start off? Uh, I'll just finish off the world Christmas. So, um... I'll start by giving my own thoughts for a little bit here. So, uh, I, th- I think the world Christmas is... First of all, it's not a good term. I don't think anyone is waging like an actual full-scale war on the holiday of Christmas. I beg to differ. Oh, well, we can get to that in a second. Um, so, I am someone who is a proponent of... Um, like, I mean, like, we could go ahead and, like, get kind of, like, give, like, our political perspectives here real quick, because, like, I feel like the war on Christmas, or what some people consider to be the war on Christmas, to be, like, a partisan issue. So, I say, like, I do, like, lean left myself. Oh, I think we were discussing before that uh, Tim and yeah, Rico yeah. both lean right. I mean, like, does anyone want to correct me there? No. Yeah, yeah, I lean more right than left. I try to keep it relatively in the middle, but as... As you've talked to me, I definitely have way more right views than I do left. Yeah, um, I am a, yeah, I, I'm I, a I proponent of using, like, if someone were to, like, run up and be, just be like, hey, happy Kwanzaa, like, you want to start celebrating Kwanzaa? I'd be like, nah, dude, but, like, cool for you. Like, that's kind of my view on it is, like, what if it happened to me? Like, um, I'm also not a proponent of the view, and we can talk about this more as it kind of, like, ties in to, like, a lot of people like feel like America is like a Christian nation, but I'm someone who thinks that like separation of church and state is really important. Um, I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't think America is defined by religion. The way you can say that like Israel is a Jewish nation or like Vatican City is a Catholic country. But I mean, that's my point. Mm-hmm country was built on the idea of se- well at least partially on the idea of separation of church yeah. and state so i mean okay but you guys can talk i mean i just more like for i mean i think that you know i think that there definitely should be separation of church and state yes but i don't think you should necessarily get offended or whatever when someone says like merry christmas or something this is the same same issue why since we're talking about getting a couple of i was, remember reading a uh, an article um i can't remember what article it was colin you were with me when i was reading it um but i remember reading it it was a reporter during the elections for trump and hillary uh mark not marco rubio's uh jeb bush he was at a jeb bush election and he was asking a question and one of the people sneezed and he said god bless you somebody then grabbed him on the shoulder and said don't ever say that again in my well, presence there's extremists on both sides like i think that's wrong obviously but i also think the people who like purposely walk up to people like hey jobs and say like hey merry christmas i don't think that's right either i mean what what was that was that wrong? merry christmas clarify for me why, uh, wait, which huh? one? Your example or mine? Well, your yours, because like walking to a job and say Merry Christmas. So, so this is there's two different ways that can be interpreted. Going up to someone in a hijab and saying that, like, hey, um, Merry hey, Christmas, hey, Merry Christmas. It can either be taken as you're purposely trying to like disrespect their religion. Like, there's a or, hey Merry Christmas, and there's a. Merry Christmas. Yeah, there's disrespecting their religion and there's just like wishing them the best of like what your holiday has. Like like Christmas is supposed to be a happy time, so you're just wishing them a Merry Christmas or you're yeah. just like screw you. Like Well mm-hmm. hey, I just wanna I like say like Christmas. anyone who like walks up to me, like if I was anyone that was like somehow obviously not like Christian Someone like walking up to me and being like, hey, Merry Christmas. Even if it was just like someone walking up to me in a store, I would be kind of like creeped out. Like, why have you like randomly taken time to come up to me and say Merry I Christmas? I also think, 
yeah, it's also just weird the idea of walking up to someone random that you don't know and saying Merry Christmas. Like, well, I walk up to. I'll you know those people. people. I'm talking Merry about like Christmas in my day. That's. Uh. That's, yeah. Yeah, and like, uh, like just like walking on the sidewalk out, like out and about, or like being in a store or something. That's that's what I'm saying. Just the other day, me and Miles went to the grocery store, and there was an old man there, and we passed him. I said Merry Christmas to him. Didn't know the guy. Never seen him in my life. I said Merry Christmas to cashier too, but. I mean, like, there's extremes on both sides, but, like, I think, okay, so, like, people, they get offended when you say happy holidays or, like, kind of, like, the people I have a problem with. Like, people are, like, you say happy holidays, and, like, oh, America's a Christian nation. You get the Donald Trump's president. Stop. Like, I got that 20 or 25 times. On work, it's on Saturday. Because, like, I interact with a lot of people. I say goodbye. I'm the last okay. person people see when they leave my grocery store. So it's like, I say, okay, happy holidays. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and, like, that's kind of like where my problem mm-hmm. comes. Is like, if you're going to, like, if you're going to get mad at me when I have nothing but, like, the best intentions for you, like, like people that good intentions, it, yeah. I can more see getting offended. Like I can't see personally getting offended if someone has Merry Christmas because that person, I mean, depending on their tone of voice and stuff, probably has the best intentions. But then there's also the people that use Happy Holidays as like, you know, as like an attack too, like saying that purposefully to someone who's like in a manga hat or something that kind of like, Happy Holidays to. Like, both of the words can be weaponized. I guess I have most of an issue with people that, like, weaponize the words. I don't know. Uh-huh. I mean, that's the whole issue with the war on Christmas. There would be no war if people didn't weaponize the words. Yeah, I mean, that's the same thing with any word, is that people just weaponize them. I think the main issue is just people interpreting things the way they're not meant to be interpreted the exactly the way they're meant to be taken and i think people a lot take of people everything the purpose. wrong way they can never take anything like, the right way you have yeah like you have like a lot, crazy bro, rules for me you know, a lot of people really do. Like, like zara or something um hold up crazy feminist seattle yeah why you're why you're popping that up i mean there's people where you can like you could be friends with them or acquaintances you see them one day hey you look nice today and then they're they take that completely the wrong way oh what i didn't look nice yesterday is that what you're trying to say was i ugly yesterday was i ugly to you yesterday what the heck you were pretty just a second ago now you turn into some freaking demon witch okay like what like what did i say i just said you were pretty i mean the People take words and they spin them their own way and they take them wrong. Okay, I've got this girl's name. So her name is Zana Joshi. And this girl, okay, so basically we were, I'll just set the scene for everybody. We were at like a town hall or whatever you want to call it in uh, Seattle. And so the thing that had Uh been, like the main topic was um, expanding... Um, like giving more funding to the Seattle Police Force, and so this one guy, um, we I don't mm-hmm. remember his actual name, but this guy's really important. So he came up and he was for it, and he told this story about how like um, his daughter had been like addicted to heroin, and like the Se- that Seattle Police Department had like helped to get his daughter like back in a functioning way. And so then there was also the other side, which um, included this Zarna girl. And so, uh, what their their argument was like, you know, like police are inherently racist, uh, BLM, all that kind of stuff. And then, so they got outside, right? So they were, yeah, that's both of these people, Zarna and this guy, um, are walking out. And so Zarna says, starts filming and says, "Hey, what's your name?" So this guy turns around, and this is a very big dad joke, and he says, "Humongous," and. 
and so um she's like she, humo- humongous <laughs> and so it, it starts like escalating he's like it's a humongous that's it you know like um all that you know like dad dad joke um and so she starts yelling like i've been sexually harassed like this man threatened to rape me and yeah like, have you ever seen it dude i just she did a video on it um and like so this guy she, like this Zarna girl obviously was the one that was like escorted off the premises and um that's kind of like that's an example of like someone taking the words used against them and then weaponizing them like oh. Zarna uh, started um i'll link her uh, youtube channel for you guys in the host channel call it if you want to put some pop-ups of these video titles mm-hmm. um she's getting uh she was getting around 250 while this was going on so then she uploaded another video a year ago and only got uh 50,000 views but one of the things i want to talk about let's just move on from the war on christmas um let's start talking about how bullshit this is no we got to stay with this i just found i just found something oh my lord Yes, okay, so one of the things, one of her big talking points here is called internalized oppression. And so this is basically what this boils down to is women are all oppressed, they just don't know it. So what it's saying is like women are somehow inherently Mm -hmm. oppressed by society, but the patriarchal male society comes out and normalizes it and rationalizes it in the women's minds. And Zarna and her crew are like the awakened ones that have realized this. And like, you are oppressed even if you don't realize it. And that's why I'm right because I am oppressed. And I cannot tell you why because societal has, society has normalized it, but I am oppressed. It's like being able to say you're oppressed without like actually having to come up with evidence. The, the one thing I have to say is you're not oppressed if you can speak. I'm just saying. If you can speak, get on Twitter, Facebook, whatever, speak your own mind, you're not oppressed. If you're really oppressed, somebody would shut you up. And I don't mean that in a demeaning way. I mean that literally. If you were oppressed, you would not be able to open your mouth without permission. You might not be oppressed, but that doesn't mean that your opinion should be. Constantly. Yeah, like feminism is by trying, by telling people, by telling people, oh, you don't want to be, opp- you don't want to be oppressed. You want your voice to be heard. Go on the internet and speak it. You're putting that sense of power into them. You're putting, you're getting more people out there that think they'll make the next biggest change. To the yeah, world. no one cares about us. Like, and go like with it. we like okay, like almost everyone our age that doesn't have like some kind of like, crazy like exception to the rule. We, like, on a scale of the world, do not matter. Like, our opinions, our thoughts, we don't matter. And, like, people like Zara, no, who, no. like, um, they also don't matter. But, like, I'm not, like, this sounds like I'm objecti- objectifying people. I'm not. Like, everyone's an individual. Everyone's lying on their own position. But, like, when people start thinking that they have, like, some kind of secret knowledge and, like, they're, like, this is where you get, like, the high IQ posts. Like, people that think they're superior and, like, are special and do have something Oh, yeah. That's what really gets scary. It's, like, the scariest type of, like, villain or evil person is someone that thinks they're doing the right thing. Because that means they won't, they won't stop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because that's, because you can never convince them that it's wrong. That, that's that's kind of like some, there's some murderers out there that have put been put in insane asylums. Now, I always criticize some news people because a judge lets somebody go, or not let go, but somebody pleads insanity and then it's no death penalty. But there have been, I'm reading, I've read a case that a dude literally thought he was, um, he w- he had been going around and it wasn't just black, Arabian, anything like that. It was all races and he was just murdering them. Just literally, I think he racked up about five people before he was caught. And when they asked him why he did it in the interrogation room, he said, I'm cleansing the earth. They said, that's wrong. They said, you shouldn't you shouldn't kill people just... And he said, no, no, no. He goes, what I'm doing is right. I'm cleansing the earth so it won't die. They couldn't convince him that what he did was wrong. He kept 
kept just saying that he yeah. was the savior of the earth. I mean, like, it was kind of weird. Demagogues and like people, like you can go back to like that guy who uh, the shooting in Nashville. Like you guys remember that like a few months ago? Um, and like you look at like his uh, Facebook mm-hmm. profile, and it was like this is the last warning. My followers and I will come. And he had like developed like a like a cult following. Like, like people that believe they're like like savior complex is super scary and like um mm-hmm. but back to like the feminism and i guess more on christmas discussion that we're still having um like people that like back to more christmas people that think that they have like some kind of secret knowledge like um christmas is like a tool of the patriarchy because like people that support the patriarchy are like men or something that was like my worst fabricated feminism mm-hmm. because like you know, my thoughts on feminism are like feminism is like really necessary like really good in like countries like saudi arabia where, like women are genuinely discriminated against yes but like feminism yes. in america these are this specifically this. like third wave feminism and like buzzfeed feminism like first and second wave i think everyone can everyone can agree we're a great thing like giving women the right to vote and like all that stuff like oh yeah necessary. This, that's and that wasn't even that wasn't even fe- that wasn't even feminism per se that was just they wanted the right to vote that they they knew that they were worth more people weren't listening they wanted the right to vote feminism was more is more about i think um uh, wasn't about because right then and there they were just protest they just wanted back in the first wave i guess you called it they were just we want to vote it wasn't about we get underpaid we're this we're that it was just we want to vote let us vote we're worth more than this let us vote second wave i don't didn't really follow the second wave i just know the first wave because of the women's suffrage movement and then you had um all these other things feminism now has changed from all the causes back from where its roots are i wouldn't even call them feminism i would call them the parents of it just they were good 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 causes and then they've sprouted they've sprouted up a child that has gone rotten to the core if if you can kind of gather what i'm saying sort of it's kind of confusing i know but it's you can kind of grasp it but I, it's changed so much now instead of it being just and i brought this up before instead of it being legitimate reasons it's more of just they to me, what I've heard from most people that support feminism or feminists that I've talked to, it's that they're lazy. I have a friend of mine who's a, I have a friend of mine who's a feminist, right? We're still friends. We disagree on a lot of things, but we're still friends. We can be civil. And we had a very, actually, I was surprised it was a very, very civil conversation of why I disagree with feminism. And I said, okay, when, when I came to your house last time, and your boyfriend was coming over and I said, hey, why don't you pour me and your boyfriend some drinks? What did you say? She goes, I'm not a mule for you to uh, for you to haul around behind you. I said, but really it's just showing courtesy inside your own home. And I said lazy, I think. I don't mean lazy. I just kind of mean that they don't, they don't feel like they have to do anything or should do anything. They just feel like it, it's kind of weird. I have to think about, I had to think about it, type in later, but she had, literally said she wasn't pretty much that she wasn't my mule and i wasn't calling her my mule i'd actually had something else to do but i mean it would be nice to be able to sit down at a table and have my host pour me a drink whether it's a man or a woman i wouldn't have just told a man hey i'll get it don't worry about it i mean what i asked the dude to do the exact same thing but that's what i've what i've kind of noticed is a pattern of it's it's just plain it's just a lot of it some of it's good causes but a lot of it's hatred it's got a lot of hatred in it i guess it it feels like okay like feminism it defines itself as like a quality of the genders right but like where some of my problems from it is like it's not it's about women's rights it's not like there's so many issues for Mm -hmm. men like you look at the suicide rate the homelessness exactly death on the job rate you know, men account for like 98% of homeless people, but 71% of homeless shelters are women only. Men account for mm-hmm. like 80% of suicide. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that that's like, like, I'm not saying there's not issues for women. There, There is, 
there are advantages that you have by being born a man, but there are also advantages to being born a woman. It's like picking and we need classes to, in a video game. I wanted, to, I wanted to clarify. Are you talking about physical advantages or advantages in society? I'm talking about societal physical, advantages. Phys- physically, I will agree that their men do have advantages. That's that's obvious. But like even even in that, women have better fine motor skills than men do. Women have, men well, they have, have better men. They have a better mentality state. Men get unstable like you've never seen before. I mean, you um, a big guy loses it, and then you just need to get out of the way because it's a truck coming towards you. Women have way better mentality states. Which is why I think they're our counterpart is because they can cool a guy down when he's piped up. But society, I will say that I have noticed, I will say I've noticed some minor things. I don't see as bad. If you look at what we had like 60 years ago for women compared to now, there's almost no problems. Now, some, some pain is moving toward a more like positive area in the way of women's rights but the opinion the mindset on it has mm-hmm. just changed too much oh yeah like we went from we went from women couldn't be in the military they couldn't have government jobs they couldn't be lawyers uh they couldn't have phds and all these things they had to do certain stuff they were only allowed to do certain stuff they couldn't speak their own mind. They, I mean, all the, the cert, big, big, big things. And even now, nowadays, women can definitely speak their mind out in public. In private homes, I get that there's certain there's certain factors like an abusive husband or boyfriend or what have you um, that um, will that will silence them per se. But that that's still still today but back then women couldn't speak their mind out in public at all i mean just some random dude knock them upside the head if they did and if you look at the progress from there to now it's i mean there's a big 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 difference is there anything else you want to say oh no 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 um, I did want to bring up. I did want to bring up since we were gonna do some Christmas stuff. I wanted to bring up the uh, Christmas songs. Well, are we are we gonna argue with the best um, one is because if you don't say it's a Holly Jolly Christmas, you're like dead to me. Oh wait, Holly Jolly Christmas is Texas. What? I'm gonna look. This is this is this is not an official news source. I don't think. Um, this is by Kadeen Griffins. Um, written December 16th, 2014 um, on a website called Bustle.com. It looks like a blog website, right? It is titled Eight Christmas Songs That Are Totally Terribly Sexist. Um, I'm going to read I'm going to read off I'll read them off for you, right? And I'm going to read why they're sexist off and I want to see if you agree with me. Um, number one, Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. Um, it's sang by Elmo and Patsy. No, not Elmo, the, the red fluffy rug that with legs and arms it's not that elmo it's a different elmo it's an actual woman um grandma got run over by a uh, reindeer elmo patsy um here's here it's here's his uh, offensive and sexist lyric it's not christmas without grandma all the family's dressed in black and we can't help but wonder should we open up her gifts and or send them back this is a song and it's pretty much grandmother gets drunk she's walking she gets hit by a reindeer. It's a joking song, right? So these people, this lady or dude, I don't know which one. I'm going to guess lady. Um, um, took this song and said it is offensive because of the lyric. It's not Christmas without grandma. All the family's dressed in black. And we just can't help but wonder, should we open up her gifts or send them back? Okay, I just have a question. How is that? How is that sexist? The only reason they would have said it's sexist is because it's got grandma in it. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I don't really. It's got her in it. I mean, what if it was him? Would we really be talking about this right now? Yeah, I'm really confused on that. Um, two is. Yeah, thank you. Uh, two is all I want for Christmas. You, right, Mariah Carey. Um, 
the most offensive and sexist lyric is Santa, won't you bring me the one I really need? Won't you please bring my baby to me? This was this song was written by a woman. Saying by a woman. Why is it sexist? So what? It says Santa, won't you bring me the one I really need? Santa Claus is a world idol. That he brings you things that you want or need. This is not a, it's, I mean, it's, I don't really get where this person is coming from. I don't, don't see it. Um, I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus is number three. Most offensive and sexist lyric is, oh, what a laugh. It would have been if daddy had only seen mommy kissing Santa Claus last night. Why is this sexist? Answer me, please. I don't, I don't have an answer. Most of you don't have an answer. <laughs> Why? I mean, like, this is this is just sad. Uh, four, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Most offensive and sexist lyric. A pair of hula hooping boots and a pistol. By the way, this was written in like 1960s, 50s or 60s, I think. A pair of hula hooping, uh, or no, hop along boots and a pistol that shoots... Uh, it's the wish of Barney and Ben. Dolls that will talk and will go for a walk in the hope of Janice and Jen, right? That is, uh, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. This thing is, I don't see what the, this is not, this has nothing to do with sexism. This is more of just, it's got pistols in it. I mean, you got to think about it. What's the correlation? Do girls tend to buy guns more or do they tend to buy dolls more could you please tell me i'm pretty sure it's dolls right they buy more feminine things most most women don't actually like particularly like firearms and there are a few that do most women don't like them um santa baby here we go getting into the nitty gritty um think of all the fun i've missed this is the most offensive lyric uh Think of all the fun I've missed. Think of all the fellas that I haven't kissed next year. I could be just as good uh, if you check on my Chris check off my Christmas list. I don't get I don't get why this lyric's also sexist. Maybe towards men, but I mean, just saying. I mean, it kind of holds men as just an object that a woman wants, but I I can't say that. So I, I don't know. Um, 12 days of Christmas. I, I was figuring, I was figured Colin would like scoff or something. I mean, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm on the eighth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me. Just, oh, <laughs> Look at this. This is the 12th day of Christmas. On the eighth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me eight maids of milk and AKA the exact moment my true love started sending me people. Okay. Yo, is your Call, would you do me a favor? Trafficker? Would you do me a favor? No, it's it's meant for cows and stuff. It's mm -hmm. maids and milking. Um, Colin, do me a favor. Look up and see Brandless. when Twelve, 12 Days, Days of Christmas Days was written. Christmas written. Um, published seventeen eighty. <laughs> okay, seventeen eighty, guys. I don't care what you say. This is 1780. This is not 19. This is not 21st century. It's not and 20th century. This note, is the 1780s. Note, according to... People uh, had slaves back then. The Wikipedia page. I'm starving. But... I'm, like, PSA, we are not condoning slavery. I think I speak for everyone that... Um, no. No. We are not condoning it. But the fact that this is... anti-slavery. Yes, but the fact that we... That this has been marked as this is written in 1780 if we judge things from back then in today's standards every person i don't care who it was was racist wait okay every okay, person okay. Uh, what what are the lyrics that they're using again on the eighth day of christmas my true love sent to me eight maids of milking AKA the exact moment my true love started sending me people. Okay. Uh, I'm that, the to AKA part, part is not in the actual it, song. It has a bunch of different variations of the lyrics starting from when it, when it was originally 
written as like a chant in 1780 all the way to a version from 1966. Mhm. Probably around the 1800s, and I'm going to guess cuz I made the milk. I mean, milk. people had people had no, no. Yeah, there's there is a we got to we got to figure out where to draw the line. Cuz this is just getting sad. It really is. It's 1780 to the ninth to the 21st century. The song's gonna change. It's not necessarily gonna change with the times. It's just gonna add on. The maids of milking up until about 19 what 69. People had to go out and milk cows. A lot of wealthy people had maids, whether they were black women or white women. It, a lot, most of the time, I will I will say it was most of the time due to um, the stature of the u.s politics sadly it was usually black women okay but here's the thing it was back in that time this is not this is not in any i mean this shouldn't even be a conversation right now it's an old song please get over it we have songs right now using the most racial slurs in the world or some of them that's, I mean, Lord. Okay, number eight. Baby, it's cold outside. Now, Matthew, I have a question. Did you know that Denver, Ohio, or no, wait, uh, Cleveland, Ohio, one of its radio stations banned this song for two weeks? You talk about, wait, wait, maybe. Today maybe I because that. it is. I did read about that, yes. Yeah, because it is offensive. Matthew, did you read about that? No. Some lady complained to a radio station that uh, "Baby, it's cold outside" was too demeaning to women. The radio station says, "Okay, we can see where you can see that. We're gonna ban it." They banned it from the radio station. Couldn't play it. Was not played for two weeks on that radio station. People got in the biggest uproar in the world. Not really, but you get what I'm saying. You get the idea. Um, they unbanned it. Played it again. Let's see. Oh wait, it's about the same lyric. Uh, most offensive lyric, right? The neighbors might think, guy says, baby, it's bad out there. Uh, women says, say, what's in this drink? No cabs to be had out there. Cue shuddering. Okay. Matthew, I don't know if you've ever looked this song up. Just to give you a background, this is not a song about a man keeping a woman inside of his house. This is a song about a man and a woman having an affair. Whether that it's whether it's a secret, like... They're just dating affair, or if it's a marital affair, you don't find out. But it is pretty much the woman is saying that, oh, she's a little worried that they're going to find out. If you read in between the lines, she's worried her family's going to find out about the affair. And he says, don't go. Come on. We can stay a little longer than this. And he's like trying to coach her like, come on, let's just hang out together. Because she's like, oh, but my father's going to be pacing the floor, all this stuff. She's not in any way. People say that it's a day rape song. I could see where you would think that, but if you really listen to the song, look up the lyrics, read it, listen to it, you you can read in between the lines that it's a man and a woman having an affair, and they don't want anybody to find out about it, but yeah. the dude's like, I don't care anymore, let's just get this done. You, know, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Sorry, protein shake's taking effect, so, um, yeah. Yeah, no worries. That, uh, yeah, it's going to be very hyper talk for the next few minutes. Um, eggs and protein shake and sausage tends to do that to you. Um, anywho, that's that's the most offensive Christmas songs, apparently, uh, according to the uh, Kadeen Griffith, Griffiths, apparently, uh, Griffiths. I, I, yeah. I didn't mean to laugh at that name, but yeah, I sound super racist now. I go to school with a lot of, yeah, I'm not even going to say that. Please say it. Um, I wanna... Well, I mean, I go to a very this is a safe. School. This is a safe space. No yeah, judgment yeah, is I'm cast. No one thinks I'm racist. Uh, here, here's an interesting there. article. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, maybe we just like cut all that out. Kotaku. Um, Fresh Prince's Alfonso Ribeiro is suing Fortnite over the Carlton dance. Oh, geez. 
Pog, 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 Pog. Dude, okay, Fortnite plug here. Um, so I had dinner. I, I sorry, it's not dinner. Brunch with my neighbors. Part of on the Saturday reason why this podcast right? isn't going to um, come out. And so <laughs> it was like we like no flame, but okay. Yes. Uh. Yes. Um. So. Like we walk in, everyone like hugs, we talk for like 15 minutes, the breakfast is ready, it's really good. Um, but we like sit down, like, this is the first thing I get asked is, so do you play Fortnite? And like, but no. Never been asked that in my life. <laughs> like, do you wanna, do you wanna yeah, hear something like, funny? I have been asking, I have been asked before, yeah. what do you like to do in your spare time? <laughs> I told a lady one time, <laughs> told a lady one time, uh, I was actually getting my hair cut at a great clips down the road from my house. And uh, this is a couple of years ago. She asked me what I like to do in my spare time. I said, go to the shooting range. We didn't talk the rest of the thing. <laughs> she didn't talk. Like I said, I go to the shooting range in my spare time. I mean, like I just said it in a very, I didn't say it like a, not like I go a, to the shooting range. I said it like, yeah, not uh, like a go to the shooting uh, range. Go to the shooting range. I mean, it wasn't a, it wasn't a psychopath way. It was like an actual legitimate answer to the question. <laughs> she would not speak the whole time. I was sitting in that chair for 10 minutes and she did not speak the whole time. After I said that, and I just, after you said a haircut, and then I was, was yeah, that's funny. No, but I didn't didn't do anything. I don't know if she was spooked or she, I don't know what it was, but she just didn't talk. And I got in the car and I was talking to my mom about it, and we just died all the way home. We just laughed all the way home. We were just laughing about it. I thought, we thought it was hilarious. I mean, what are you doing in your spare time? I'll go to the shooting range. Doesn't talk for the rest of the thing. I mean, like. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, I tried to keep it more neutral. People ask me, I'm like, yeah, I do a debate, play video games, Boy Scouts. Boy Scouts. And I have a job. Yeah, that's a. Uh, I'm trying to get that one done. Either of you guys Boy Scouts, I mean, I know Jericho is in the uh, room, used to be, uh, dropped out, went you know, to the Marines the instead. Scouts for a few years, did not have a mm. hottest of times. Hey, yo, pull up. I am, uh, for people that are possibly curious, I am life right now. Which, for those of you who are not indoctrinated, I, my next yeah, drink I is remember, Eagle. I have a fun story. <laughs> One time we were on a camp Sweet. Out, my friend's tent and played poker with, poker with him and his dad. I was about... <laughs> Heck yeah. Yo, can you DM okay, me the name uh, of that friend? Because I most definitely know who it is. But, uh, curious. yeah. Um, hold on. No, no, no. no. Um, yeah. Can Makes sense. Mind, I, I forgot mind, that man. Playing poker <laughs> Yeah, that's amazing. Keep in mind, keep in mind the other thing that we have discussed with that man. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> wait. Okay, so you want to get back to the Christmas spirit? Uh, best top two of your best Christmas songs. If you had to judge, uh, start oh, with Colin. This is a tough one. I will say, uh, you know. It, it's a hard one for me to admit, but I, I do not have a hard time jamming out to Santa Baby by Ariana Grande. Her version, her version of it. Oh yeah, um, Santa Baby. What else? It's hard to think of Christmas songs on the top of your head. You guys like Jingle Bells? We're not going to write this easier. Uh... Oh, but Deck the Halls is pretty good. I like Deck, Deck the, the Halls. Deck the and Jingle Bell is pretty good. I mean... Uh, it's beginning... Okay, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas is a good one, too. I'll go with those two for my top two yeah. pick. I'm going to say... I'm going to say my top two pick is Baby It's Cold Outside and... Um, uh, it's actually kind of funny. I did not get this off that list that I read. This is, these are actually my top two. These are two of my favorite Christmas songs. 
um, baby, it's cold outside, and grandma got run over by a reindeer. I feel, I feel like those grandma, are my two favorites. Yeah, I want to say uh, Deck the Hall. Back to what you said, Tim. And I feel like it, even Sweet. though it's not one that's picked like ever, uh, Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer is a classic. Bro, it's freaking hilarious. Matthew, have you ever heard it before? No. Get, look it up and listen to it. And while we're on this thing, we uh, where we can't hear it so we don't get a copyright strike or anything because YouTube's nuts. Um, let's uh, do that. But uh, listen to it. All right, hold on. From Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Yeah, whoever's saying this sounds like they just did like a loader. Drive. Oh, they did. Trust me, they did. Yeah, those those are my top picks. Uh, and then Matthew, you expressed yours. Is there anything? Is there anything else that we could talk about? We're gonna be doing. E Colin, you have a lot of editing to do, pal. Peace, peace, guys. It's been it's been real. It's been fun. It's been real fun. We are the Locomotion Podcast crew once again. Draco. Matthew and Tim. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. We're going to try to be more consistent with content. I know we're going to have a ton of time for content. We're all in school, so Christmas break. Um, I'm personally in free some days. I mean, obviously we'll have to work that out. But So hopefully we're going to get a lot more content coming out. Uh, we have a website, YouTube channel. Uh, I put, I, uh, socials I linked in the description of this video on my Twitter. for all three of us. Yes, at Dracone Dev. Yes, uh, at, is it Dracone Dev? Yeah, at Dracone Dev. Uh, plug mine to at World9, that's World's Home to use. Uh, yeah, once again, thanks for listening. Uh, we're going to have a lot more content coming to the real soon, yeah. so stay tuned for that, everybody. Happy holidays.